Hi guys, today we're going to show you guys how to install Linux Trial inside a virtual machine. If you don't know what a virtual machine is, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to click New. We put in the name, we choose Linux, and incidentally, so if we type in, if we type in Royal, pardon me, if we type in Linux Royal, we come down here, we type Linux, we go to Ubuntu, because we're installing the light version, and we would click next. We click next. Sorry, that was just because I, I, I had a folder that was already the same name. We click next, we'd select the memory, we'd click next again, create a virtual hard drive now, we'd go create. We'd go next. Now, dynamically allocated versus fixed size is quite a big difference in speed. Fixed size means that it's always the same size. You've already made that partition for the, the virtual machine. Dynamically allocated would mean that the, the partition gets bigger up to the point only that you set for 20 gigs or whatever it's going to be. In our case, it is going to be 20 gigs. So we'd, we'd select fixed size. We're going to click dynamically allocated. Normally, I want you guys to pick fixed size, but the reason I'm going to do dynamically allocated is because I'm going to destroy this partition in a minute. This is just to show you. I already have one set up. We would set, set our partition, create 8 gigs, right? That's what it's set to by default, but I guess we'll put it for 20 for now because I'm just showing you. 19 is good enough. So that's created. Okay, but I'm going to destroy this, as I said. And we're going to pretend that this is the one I, we just created. Let me check my recording here. Yeah, it's still going strong. We're going to start it. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. We would choose our ISO and we would hit reset. So I'm hoping that you guys know a little bit about what I'm trying to show you with virtualization so I won't go into that too far. Now here we get four options and we get a countdown timer. If I don't pick anything or move the cursor within this timer cursor out, it's going to pick for me. So I pick that so it doesn't time me out. Now there's live boot which will boot into a live system. Um, also know that in this bootloader, the grub bootloader as it seems to be, um, you can also press the right arrow over to instead of hitting enter to to choose that that selection there's also um, besides a boot into the live system there's also boot live in safe mode graphics mode this would be if you are having some kind of issue with the graphics and you want to boot in a, in a non driver area install this would be just to install the install to start the installer directly uh, pardon me I'm a little tired right now and then there's mem test and this is basically to run a basic mem test on your memory and then there's HT boot the first hard disk that'd be the just kind of ignore, or ignore this disk and just kind of boot the hard drive instead of the, the optical disk. So we're going to go boot the live uh, system. We're going to hit enter. There it goes. Now we're going to get an error, and it's just because I didn't turn something on, but it's fine. We can ignore it. And uh, I also didn't install the right graphics drivers for this computer, so it might look a little funny, but it shouldn't look too bad. Here's the air I was talking about. Going to do absolutely none of what it just said. <laughs> so here we are. Now with this one, we need to make sure we pick a session. Now as I said, I didn't install the right driver, so we're going to make sure we pick Cinnamon 2D. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put in um, Royal, and there is no password. And right about now we're going to start to see the, de the desktop environment boot up. Here it is. So here we are. As you can see, it's a mix of cinnamon and gnome shell. 
Unity has been completely purged. Because it is such a hog, it's not even funny. And what we'll find right here is Linux Royal Lite. Now, if you don't find this right here, because sometimes it's not there right away, or sometimes it doesn't appear there, you want to go to um, up into here and find your file manager. Okay, This is going to open up your file manager. And inside the file manager, we will want to go to our desktop, because that's where the installer is. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click this guy right here. got it so of course this is a little bit slower because it's a live installation and this is not how fast the Linux performs of course I'll pick English because that is what I speak I'm going to download updates while installing ooh That's fine. We can install without that. I don't feel like messing around with network stuff right now. Okay. So we can go ahead and erase this because this is, like I said, a virtual machine. So it sees the whole 22 gigabytes. We're going to click install now. And there's also an option if you have Windows on the same partition to install it side by side. But because this is a virtual machine, and we just made uh, a 22 gigabyte uh, partition for this, we don't actually need to worry about any of that stuff right now. We can just delete the whole disk and install it. So we go install now. And like I said, video is a little bit funny right now because we're not done the installation. Now it thinks I'm in New York, um, but I'm not. I'm over here. Nope, not quite. No, oh, not quite. There you go. Close, close as it'll get. I'm in Victoria, but Vancouver's pretty right. So we hit continue. Now here we pick our keyboard. Um, normally I pick English UK, but English US is good enough. That's just because sp in Canada we spell uh, color and harbor and stuff like that with an O-U-R instead of an O-R. Okay, so my name is Jake, so I'm going to put that in. Okay, and it wants a password. Now you need to make sure that your, your username in any kind of, most Linux distros anyway, is a lowercase for the, for the username. And then a password, we're just going to put in a welcome one. I love how the Microsoft guy who came and did a talk said that welcome one was a good password and it's a fair password to Linux. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Notice the option there also to encrypt my whole home folder. We're not going to use that option, but that's also an option. Now I'm going to start reading this stuff to you. Linux Royal Lite, based on Ubuntu 12.04, is packed with features to make your computer delightful to use. This version makes use of the Cinnamon 1.6 desktop interface, a brand new way to find and manage your applications. Now with more features and faster. We'd like to show some cool things to look forward in your, sorry, in your new operating system. Remember that Linux Royal comes with dark and light themes, so you can enjoy the look that fits you best. I personally am a dark theme guy, and I really like this default, excuse me, this default theme that he has up here. You can see that he's got Conky there on the right-hand side. That's uh, there by default. And Conky, as I've said in other videos, is basically like a widget. It sits there and just kind of monitors your CPU, monitors your disk input and output. So the next bit here is customize Linux Royal Lite the way you want it. Linux Royal comes with beautiful custom made themes created by the Linux Royal team, including all original wallpapers. Change themes using advanced setting tool. We are always making new themes for the Linux Royal community. And it's true, and they make really nice themes. I personally really like this one that's in the background. It's a really good job of of customizing everything. I know that because I use KDE and whenever I customize it always looks kind of funny. <laughs> so he did a really good job with the way the light blue fades into the dark blue. So as you can see if you, if you don't know what a virtual machine is, this is like a, a computer operating system running within 
my Windows 7 operating system. Yeah, I know that's a that's a uh, <laughs> that's a monstrosity to the Linux community. What are you doing running this on? Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Forgive me, Linux gods. Linux beards. So here we can kind of scroll through this stuff. Minimum setup allowing you to install all your favorite apps like Photo, Music, Internet, Office. Build it how you want it. I'm not reading that. Um, yeah. Okay, that was written by the Ubuntu team, I'm pretty sure. Actually, no, it's not. Or maybe it was. It's hard to tell because he might have just laid in there. I'll have to ask Kyle. It's pretty good performance, this, this, this slimline version of Lite. I was really actually impressed by how well Kyle did it. I mean, because Ubuntu by itself is getting pretty light on resources for a 64-bit install. Because it's interesting, like, if you're using Windows, default is like 650 megabytes it uses of RAM by default, no AV kind of thing. But if you, that's 32-bit. If you're using 64, it doubles instantly up to 1,200, 1,300 megabytes of RAM, almost a gig and a half. But um, it's interesting how, you know, these 64-bit installs, they only use like, you know, 400 megabytes of RAM, 200 megabytes of RAM. Uh, like, I was really impressed when I used to see Debian get like 150 megabytes of RAM of usage or... Or something really low like that. And then when I see something, you know, a lot more cutting edge and newer, like, you know, Linux Royal, and it's got, you know, it, it's got some of the newer things that, you know, eat up a lot more RAM, and it's still competing at, you know, 150 to 200 megabytes of RAM uh, for an install, you know, that's that's pretty good. And, you know, I think a part of that is, in all honesty, attributed to the Ubuntu team because they make really light distro, but at the same time, I, I, they were never that light as, as Kyle made it. So I don't know what he did, but this is a really fast version. And, and the reason, like I said, it's slower is because we're running it in a virtual machine, and it's also running um, in a live installation. We're not actually doing the real installation yet. Or we're not actually running the real install um, of Linux in the VM. Right now we're just running it in the live session. Okay, see how quick that was? Restart now. Now, of course, this is just going to restart the VM. It's not actually going to restart my whole computer. Or my video would stop, wouldn't it? <laughs> so it says, please remove installation media and close the tray, if any, then press enter. So here, this is what it looks like when you load up. This is the Grub bootloader. And what we were greeted with was Ubuntu, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, start Ubuntu Linux, regular version. There's also recovery mode, then a memtest, which is basically the memtest86 program. Then there's a serial console. I believe that's for attaching like a serial port or something like that and working from a lower, um, a lower, uh, I'm not too sure what that's for, so I'm not going to continue guessing. So we click on this one. Start our first boot up of this install. And I love this back page. That's awesome. It looks like a sun almost, but it's blue. Put in our password. That's it. Linux is installed. 